so uh, I, I will start oh, by giving you the agenda. So we start with with uh, some networking basics. I will take the the existing uh, socket library uh, and uh, present it. Oh, <coughs> actually. I'll present the networking co concepts. I will give some uh, reminders. Uh, and uh, then, quickly, we start a hands-on session. So to try to, to code a little bit, the best way to practice. And then we, uh, so we first do uh, some client code with socket stream, and then go on with serving, again, uh, some a hands-on session with uh, concurrency issues, and then we'll end up with uh, uh, complex interaction, which is the the most uh, appropriate way, from my point of view, to do to do uh, networking with uh, small talk or with object in general, which is uh, to have a distributed object uh, system or infrastructure. And uh, so we'll see how to 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 make one or how it works under the hood. And uh, I didn't put it on the agenda. I add a few slides at the end if we have some time to present uh, some perspective of current work on uh, the Ocean project, which is in the new library for, uh, we hope for Faro 1.3. Okay, so. Uh, The first concept we need to, to learn about is the concept of uh, socket. The idea is that uh, it's, an, it's an old concept which is uh, uh, proved very powerful and uh, uh, useful. So it lives since, uh, since the, the early history of networking or almost. And uh, so the idea is that we want to have different software running on different processes uh, that exchange data. And data, it is uh, either, uh, I mean, it is bytes, simply. So these processes can be either on different devices. So this is what happens with your uh, laptop or uh, uh, PC where you are connected to uh, a network and you interact with a, a remote server, for instance, uh, a web server. Or it can be inside the same device. So you can have a, a different uh, software inside your own machine that interacts through the network-like communication. There are different ways to interact or to, to transport data. The two main ones are TCP and UDP, you already know about this. So uh, the TCP, TCP, or difference between both is that uh, TCP is connected. So this means that first you decide with whom you want to interact, and then you, you, you start uh, exchanging data. On the other hand, UDP is uh, uh, you, you, s you send data to, to, to someone, maybe it arrived, maybe it will not arrive. So this is the reliability issue. Uh, with uh, TCP, you can send any amount of data. It's reliable uh, so, uh, since uh, there is uh, the, 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 the layer that takes care of uh, sending the data in the right order and uh, <coughs> ensuring that the data will arrive to the, the recipient. In UDP, it's, uh, there is no, uh, uh, there is no, uh, uh, there it's uncertain. You are not sure that the data will arrive to the recipients. And the data, can is data size is bound. So each time you send <coughs> something, it's uh, the maximum, it's like uh, 64K, if I remember correctly. So in the reminder, we focus on TCP for two reasons. First, TCP is, 
you, you cannot live without it. You have, it's used uh, everywhere. And the other reason is uh, I couldn't make UDP run. <laughs> the current library is bogus, and this is why we, we, we start uh, the, the Ocean project to clean up all this, or actually to re-implement it from scratch, but we'll discuss this later. So, to illustrate how things work with TCP, so the idea is you have a server that is uh, expecting connections. <coughs> so he listens on some parts and waits for a re uh, connection requests. You have a client, here take client A, that wants to connect. So it sends the, the, the connection requests. When if the connection is accepted, you start, uh, I mean, the server side starts uh, another process for communication, or it creates another socket for, for communication. So at the server side, this is important. You have two sockets, uh, one for uh, establishing communication, and the second one for actually interacting with the client. While the client side, you have only one that is used for both situations. And uh, often the, the server does not serve only one client, but multiple clients. So you need to handle concurrency. So we can have, while interacting with client A, another client B that arrives and requests uh, connection and gets established. And then a, a third client C that uh, requests connection, connection while B, A and B are already uh, exchanging data with the server and so on. So, time to code. So you take uh, any uh, out-of-the-box faro, and uh, so I, I made some my tests with the, with the faro 1.2, but you can take 1.1, it should, should work. And uh, let's do a simple client. So we'll, we'll not use sockets, which is, rather low level, but socket stream which, pr which provides some facilities. Uh, and we try to connect to a server, send string, receive a string, and then close the connection. OK. Your workspace. <laughs> so if we want to, to, to make a client, we need to connect to, uh, to a server. So we need to have some server. You can either, uh, if you, you, took, you look to the socket stream uh, comments, it is one of the 50% the of classes, uh, commented classes. Uh, uh, there is a comment that shows you how to use socket stream and how to retrieve, <coughs> uh, how to send uh, an HTTP GET query to a server and then uh, get the, the HTML page uh, in result. Otherwise, <coughs> hmm? yes, yes, I'm, I'm going on. Uh, I put all, all the, <laughs> I, I provide all the elements. The, the, uh, the other way, uh, I prefer to use it. At least I tried it on, uh, on my Mac machine with, uh, with Luke. What <laughs> the ad, uh, is to use uh, the the NC uh, Unix utility. So in a terminal, uh, cr we create a, a server that will send the small talk uh, string to in to the first client that connects. So the the echo small talk here is just to write the small talk string. And then NC is our utility, which is a, a network as an NC stands for network, network cat, but OK. This is not important. Uh, the, the, the options L means uh, to listen to the port which number is provided here, port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And K is to handle multiple connections. So let's do it.
Public space. I don't need this. Let's go to socket stream. Okay, it's there. And if you look, there is a comment that says a lot of things. And there is an example here. Yeah, yes, it's. I mean, you, uh, it is always the, the the local host that makes the that serves. Uh, if you have multiple interfaces, you are uh, you should be able net multiple network interfaces. You should be able to to select the interface, but uh, actually, I never use it. <laughs> so if if you do it j just like this, la like I showed. It took the default interface, the default network interface. So, <coughs> so the first thing I will show is how to use. I mean, just run simply the socket stream. I will copy it in a workspace so to make things. Clear. Okay. Okay, we can we can remove or make things simpler. Was it about? So, the first line it connects to the server. Here it is the Faro projects on port 80 because we wanted the, the web server. Ah, uh, yes, give up. So, I need a network connection. Of course, my Wi-Fi was off. Still. Okay. Hope it will work. Okay. Okay, now it's ready. So I, I send the get query to the server. And then I read everything until the, <coughs> until the end, all data. Then where is my transcript? Okay, here is my transcript. So the results, which will be HTML code, <coughs> will be displayed there. Okay. So this is the content of the Faro project page. I, uh, there's something not found. Okay. <laughs> so let's try with another basic.org. So first, I need to close my stream. I and then to open the new one. Okay. Send again the, the get. Read the results. Display. Okay. Yes, there is a redirection because we, we always redirect the the ISAC site to the to the wiki link. That's okay. This is the basic basic things that, that you get. So now I will show the the other parts which is with the with the local server. So 
So first I need to close this. Mm -hmm. I set up the text default. I change the change the font to get a bigger one. Let's try. Okay. So I will echo. Uh, so the the small talk string. This is string I want to send to the client. So if I it simply prints the the, the echo command simply prints the string. So I don't need this anymore. Then I create the server in C. So I want uh, in C is a utility that allows to to mimic either a server or a client. So the option L make it act as a server and k to accept multiple connections and then i need to uh, when i use the option l i need to to provide the ports so i want to work on port one two three four five and that's it so when you once you start it it just waits i go back so i will leave this i go back to the my faro image so my stream maybe I should copy it stream so um, let's make it bigger I want to connect to the local server so you can use either local host or the uh, loopback address 127.27.0.0.1 and the port is the one we provide on the terminal which is 12345 so I can check if it is connected connected it's connected so that's true and now I will send some data. So <coughs> so I say hello from Faro. <coughs> okay, I don't need all the carriage returns but so I send data if I go to my terminal I see that it appears mm -hmm. yes what happens if it's connected then? Uh, you you get a timeout exception after some some period yeah, but what's the reason for why it would happen? Uh, in this case uh, maybe mm, if you don't have the right you have the right port oh, actually it's a black box and you usually we, when when working on uh, on the ocean project we have hard time to figure out what's what's going on there can be plenty of strange reasons one of them can be the firewall that gets things uh, wrong i mean you Maybe it's better to shut down your imagine restart it and uh, no, because it okay Thanks. and uh, the other reason if you already did a connection to the server and get the data then the next time you try again uh, there is no data anymore so you will wait uh, uh, until the timeout so it will hang and uh, I think the default timeout. Uh, Duration is 45 seconds. This is arbitrary. Uh, it's in the, the socket library. I don't know what it is 45 and not 60 or 30, but or 42. <laughs> 42, the universal answer. So, uh, no, I didn't finish. So I sent data. So now I can read data. Stream. Next line. Okay. And then 
uh, I can print it so I get the results. Okay, here there are different ways to get data. You can get the next character with the next uh, with the message next. You can get the next line and saying that the end of the line is carriage return. A return. This will be next line CR or next line LF here. So depend and the, the line ending depends on the, the server and the test I made on macOS with NC, it is the line ending is LF. If there is another another uh, message, but I will not evaluate it. It's next line uh, only. And then if you look at the implementation of next line, uh, it is in socket stream. Where is socket stream? Yes, the last one. It's called the next line CRLF. So we check the ending. I mean, it's it reads characters until uh, until it uh, reaches the CR and LF uh, sequence. But uh, if you use it, at least on Mac machines, it will hang because it will wait indefinitely for for these characters. So we need to be careful about. So there is a convention. You need to decide with the server what is the convention you, you will use. And uh, <coughs> in the case of uh, of uh, HTTP servers, this is what we did with trying to connect to the the ESAC server. We we said up to end, so until the connection is closed. So from the server side, usually in HTTP servers, this is the default behavior, is that the connection is closed at the end of the, of the, the uh, once you get the, the answer, once the pay, all the HTML code is sent. But this is not always true. So uh, you need to, 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 to be in sync with the, with the server, depending on the server, you will decide which protocol you need to use and uh, whether you will read line by line and so on. So that was easy. We can go on. We'll switch to dual monitors okay <coughs> so again this is <coughs> the the workspace code formatted and uh, with with color highlighting of uh, messages important messages Okay, so if there is no more questions. Yes? Send command, it relies on. Okay. Uh, but you see, if, in, if you use the NC, which is uh, a tool from Unix world, it does not relay, it sends uh, LF at the end and not uh, CR. So. But, but even with NC, you see that if you send the string, they are very line based. So you need to agree on the, the, the format you exchange. So, so the, the idea is that sockets are uh, really uh, low level, so you ex exchange byte. When you decide to stop, it uh, up, uh, depends upon the convention. Also, it's uh, the uh, the layer above. At least this is my understanding of it. Uh, so now, second challenge. So we try to write the simplest possible server. So uh, it is a server that listens of some port, as all servers, of course. It will accept a single client connection, so we will not deal with concurrency, concurrency issues. It will send a string, receive a string, and close the connection. That's it. And for tests, 
you can either start um, another image because we don't we don't want to, to to play with concurrency yet or you can use nc but now nc as a client so you see the options change so the, there is always the, the echo uh, message but then in C, there is no option and you need to provide the host to which you want to connect. And then, of course, the port. So things are a bit more complicated here. So for if you look to the, to the small talk code, uh, in the workspace, you need to create a socket. So the socket code, the current library is dirty. So you have a single class that implements all protocols. You have UDP, TCP, and uh, all the rest. It acts as a client, as a server. You have everything mixed in. And uh, to create a TCP socket, you need to send the message new TCP to the socket class. So we, call, we, we store this first socket in a variable call, called connection socket, because this is the socket that we will we'll use to handle connection requests. Then, what, Stefan? Yes, so I will go back to the picture. It is this one on the top, the one that that handles connection. So th this the 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 red uh, rectangle correspond to to the socket in my drawing. So. This is the connection socket that will listen on some, some ports. So it will wait for connection on port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and with backlog size 10. The backlog size is then a buffer that uh, stores uh, pending connection requests. Or at least this is what I understood. Uh, so in our case, it's not important. But if you are developing a server that is supposed to handle multiple connection, you need to to provide uh, to provide the right number here because if you you allocate uh, if you provide a too big number you lose memory space and if it's small one you will lose some connections but we we can discuss this later if you want <coughs> so uh, usually a server is a, is sh should act in a loop it works for for a connection for some time and if there is no connection it uh, resets and then uh, wait again and so on. So in our case, we, we do a simple wait. So we, we need to be fast enough. <laughs> we wait for 30 seconds. You can put a longer delay if you want. <coughs> so during, after this uh, duration, if there is nothing happens, it will uh, raise a timeout exception. Uh, and then if during this delay there is a connection, the result is a new socket, which, uh, which I stored in the variable interact socket. And because sockets are, uh, are low level, one of the uh, things that are, uh, one of the limitations of socket that they are a limited buffer size. So this is why we use socket stream. So it's, it's more, uh, we can store more data. We don't not need to worry about the buffer. So. Once I get the socket that will, uh, that will allow the server to interact with the client, I build a socket stream on it, so with this line. And then I can go on as we did in, in the, the previous example. So then uh, send command, uh, next line, and, and so on. And then, of course, at the end, you should not forget to close in, all, uh, in both cases. If you uh, forget to close, this means that we'll, because each time you, uh, you create a socket, there is uh, a resource, I mean, a socket allocated by the operating system. So you, you are using uh, the, the OS resources. So you get, uh, if you, don't, you forget to close them, and of course you, you forget them, you get a memory leak. Um, yes? Um, but, uh, I'm not sure how uh, how we. In both space, you can leave the reference to socket, and then it will pump into the. 
Yes, but uh, we we had a lot of trouble with socket. I'm done. I'm, we didn't check this this side. Uh, if it works really correctly, if finalization is really done correctly. But of course, it's better. Yes. To, to finalize the explicitly. But uh, we uh, uh, anyway, uh, even if you uh, you finalize, even if you close socket. Uh, there is some. Uh, it, it takes uh, some time before it was. It, cli it is clean up from from the the system. Uh, what we <coughs> what we often do we 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 look in the uh, if you look in the terminal you you use, uh, use net state or ls off you see the list of open uh, sockets and all. Uh, uh, resources consumed by by by, by the image, and uh, sometimes we had some uh, some some when working with with RST a distributed uh, small talk library, uh, we had some uh, lot of sockets that was open and uh, Nick had hard time figuring out what's what's going on, <laughs> and uh, I mean the behavior is not always. Uh, Always clean. At least uh, you need to be careful when 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 dealing with it. So let's try this. <coughs> Hello. Okay. Uh, no. Let's start. I'm supposed to have the code somewhere. Yes, I have it there. So first, so this is my, my code is ready. Uh, I forgot to kill my, my previous server. So this is important. If you have multiple servers running on, a, on the same <coughs> machine or s uh, with the, the same port, the, the first one will win all. It will capture all incoming messages. So I need to, to be careful to kill the, the NC server. So, OK. Uh, I take a longer delay. I evaluate. Uh, I, let's clean up, clean up a bit. Clean up the transcript and then, okay, let's do it. Okay, now the firewall is complaining. Uh, do you want Squeak to accept incoming network connections? Yes. And I go to my terminal, I do the same, except that I want to act, to have NC act like a client. So that's connected to the local host at port 1234. Okay, so it seems to work. So at this side, I get the Faro server message. In the I go to Faro. I s okay, it looks like I delete something. Let's try it again. I do it this way. And uh, ah yes, because I don't read the I read the, okay I read the next five characters, of course. If I do next line, L F. And then again. Now it works. So I have the full line. Okay, this is what you should write on the workspace. Shall we go on or? Okay, let's go on. 
if no one is complaining, I continue. <laughs> so, challenge three, let's try uh, something more complicated with uh, multiple clients. So I want to do a Twitter-like uh, application. So with one server that will display uh, messages from uh, multiple clients and clients and different clients connecting to the same server and sending messages. So this means that I want uh, that I need a server that handles uh, multiple connections. So I need to support multi-threading. Uh, and uh, each client has a single process. So from the client side, there is no concurrency I issues. <coughs> but from the server side, uh, I need to ensure some synchronization. So what we need to do is we need to, to use the fork message on uh, block closures to create new threads. We need to use a mutex for uh, handling critical code. And with each mutex, we send a critical message with the, the block of code that you want to, to ensure, uh, I mean, to avoid the multiple execution, concurrent execution of the code. One thing important is that sockets exchange only raw data. Maybe we don't need it this already. Wait, we will fix it later. Okay, let's uh, let's finish the finish the challenge. Ready for the challenge? Uh, wait, I can keep it this way and switch. Hello. Challenge three. So here you need to write a bit more code. And uh, where is my browser? So I try to write a simple yet uh, work, I mean, usable server. A, gen a generic one, so we have inheritance, we should use it whenever it's appropriate. So first I write a server, an abstract server, and then I subclass it with my uh, application-specific uh, features, which is uh, m my Twitter-like application. So the server is supposed to have, uh, I mean, at least I suggest to have a a flag to show whether it is running or not. Uh, a lock, which is the mutex that ensures uh, the, the that handles concurrent access to this to the the running flag, and the connection sockets and the port number. So don't remember? Yes. So to create, we, we have this facility uh, method on the class side. So you just provide the port and it creates a new instance of our server with appropriate ports. And what it does on the initialized side, we create the mutex here. And then we set up the server as not running. <coughs> or maybe I should start with with the start message. To start the server, we, not, we want to handle multi, we want to, to have the server running in its own thread um, and uh, handle multiple start requests. <coughs> so when you send starts, you want, you first you want to check if it is running. If it is already running, don't do anything. So just quit. Otherwise, with the flag to true. And this section is critical because if you have multiple start requests, we want to have to, if the server is stopped, the first start request will, or start message 
will actually start the server, but the other ones should uh, just uh, do nothing. So this is why we want we want to ensure this to avoid multiple multiple processes, uh, multiple process creation. And uh, for the when we actually start the server, we just have this serve message inside the inside the block and we send the fork message to the block closure which creates a new process so let's open a process browser when you you play with concurrency uh, process browser is there the process browser is your friend so by default the process browser gives you just a picture of the current situ current process and and that's it if you want uh, to monitor what's going on you need to to turn on the auto refresh or auto adapt and now let's try to start the server no i don't want the transcript i need a workspace so in the workspace uh, so server Hey, let's wait. Is it, it isn't, isn't it abstract? Yes, it's abstract. But anyway, I will work with my subclass. My Twitter. Uh, import. Remember. Okay. Uh, I create my server, my server starts. If I go back to the process browser, I see that there is a process of priority 40. This is the user foreground priority. What you see on the, the left parts between parentheses is the priority of processes. Each line is a process in this pan, in the upper left pan. And uh, if you select a process, you see the, its current stack. And with the, the menu, uh, with the, the, the right uh, button of the, the, the right mouse <coughs> button, you can, you can uh, change the stack. I mean, you can do a lot, lot of things, including terminating the, the process if you want to kill it, suspending it, which, which can be then resumed afterwards. You can change the priority. Uh, you can debug. If you debug, you get a debugger open and, uh, and you can, uh, uh, I mean, do whatever you want with, with, the, with the, the process. I mean, the current, the, because the process is simply a block closure being executed, so you can go uh, uh, inside and do step by step or proceed or whatever or even change uh, change the code and etc okay <coughs> that was just to show you the process browser uh, now i will stop my server if i stop my server it will take some time yes because i had because it's waiting, it will not stop immediately. Why? I have, uh, because this is not a kill, it is a, a request for stop. You have your process that, uh, your server that is looping. It listens, waits some time for a connection, and then it loops again. And while it is waiting, if you don't kill it, you you just send uh, what I did with the stop. It just a request for stop, which means I put the flag running to false, and what is what is done in the ser serve it it listens on the port and uh, so it it listens the port and then it goes in infinite loop or almost infinite loop because it loops on the flag. Why the flag is running is to true. It's continue handling connection. W wait for connection, and uh, 
and uh, handle uh, new clients. And the stop only turns the flag to false. So why we are while we are in this executing this handle connection message, it will uh, it will not not check the flag until it finish performing this message, and waiting for connections takes some time because we want we don't want to to check connection every third every half second, but instead we wait for some duration. So. Let's, let's go back from the beginning. The start, puts, the start message puts the flag to true, the true the, if the, the server isn't running. And then create a new process for serving. And what it does actually, it creates a connection socket, make it listen on some ports, and loops while the flag is, uh, the is running is to true, to handle connections until the flag um, until it is stopped, and handle connections. It waits for some duration for a new socket. If there is no uh, for a new client, if there is no client requesting a connection, so if there is a timeout, simply return and the next iteration it will wait again for a new client and so on until there is some client that arrives and when there is a client that arrives here we create a, a socket stream so when there is a client that arrives we get a socket for coming for interacting with the client and we create socket stream we wrap it inside the socket stream and we create an extra thread to interact with the client. It is important if you want to handle multiple clients to create a new, uh, uh, a, a, new, a new process for each client. This is why there is the fork here. So for each cl new client, we create a new process. So you release the server process. Another thing I didn't, uh, take, uh, didn't uh, take care of it, it is the priority of process. The highest is the priority, I mean, when there are multiple processes ready to, to run, the one of highest priority is the one who, who, takes, who is actually executed. So you need to, to decide what, what is the, the, the process that you want to be of highest priority. Usually the, uh, the process that listens for connections is highest priority because it quickly blocks. It quickly blocks because since, since it, it starts waiting for incoming connections. <coughs> and uh, and that's it. Uh, so the, uh, we need to, to continue what we do with the client. So in an extra process, it interacts with and then close which is, uh, okay, we need this, do some interaction and ensure that we, we clean up afterwards. We, so we close the socket stream. And what we do here in the interaction, it is the responsibility of my subclass. Mm -hmm. Yes. What if you are close and not as close and destroy, like we did in the previous example? No, in the previous example, wait, if it, you look in, in the serve, uh, there, are, there is close and destroy. It's for sockets. This is something uh, actually uh, I don't understand uh, uh, completely. In uh, the current implementation implementation of sockets, you can either close a socket, and then it will be uh, you will be able to reopen it again, or you can close and destroy, and then you completely release the handle. I mean the uh, on the, I mean the resource at the operation system uh, level. But uh, so uh, usually you do for, for sockets, it's close and destroy. But the protocol for socket stream is simply closed. You simply close the socket stream and then the socket stream 
it will close and destroy uh, the underlying sockets. And why it is only socket and um, only closed for socket stream and not closed and destroy? I don't know. And why we do do we need to? I mean, usually it's I've been told that it's bad practice to uh, to reopen to uh, a socket. Usually uh, you throw it away. You <laughs> and Uh, I mean, you can, you, you can you, you, it's reusing it, but uh, maybe sometimes if you knew you you want to make some socket pulls, maybe it it ma makes sense. But usually the pr the practice is that you throw away sockets, you create them, use them, and once you've done, you you release them completely. And uh, that's it. yes. What is connection Q? Actually, uh, I I never use it. I'm I'm discovering it. Uh, and and other stuff slowly, uh, and uh, sorry. <laughs> but there are plenty of things that we are discovering slowly. We discovered recently that there are plenty of primitives on the networking plugin. That uh, it is Janik that uh, found that that uh, that they are not available in the image side. They are so we were lacking some features for uh, networking, and uh, it's not documented, it's not uh, available, and uh, no one use it. So uh, there are other stuff that there is also, we are discussing here, only sockets, which is low level stuff. There are, uh, you, you, we are doing objects, so we are supposed to do uh, uh, object messaging, and when you d build distributed application, we should use distributed objects. No one use distributed objects. Why? We don't know. <laughs> but we should use remote object messaging. This is why. I mean, why we do objects on one side, and when it comes to networking, we, we, send, we play only with bytes. We go to the lowest level. This is bad practice. So switch to objects. <laughs> Uh, I said everything I had to say about uh, about the this example. No, there is also okay. No, it's, uh, the subclass is straightforward. I just w need to to play with the socket stream. I mean, this is this is the the server. I'm playing with server, and just each time it gets a connection, it just read data from it and display it on on the screen script. So maybe it's a good. Uh, I mean, actually, when I was uh, preparing my slide, I thought to have a really real hands-on session, so to have people code it. <laughs> so it's a good it's a good uh, exercise, but. Uh, I don't know how motivated you are. <laughs> it's okay, coffee break. <laughs> so, oh, there is uh, may, may, maybe something uh, speaking of, of uh, mis uh, I mean, uh, unknown things and hidden features. Okay, <laughs> so this is, will be the last word before the, the break. <laughs> uh, when you create a server, I mean a socket server that listens on some part, you have uh, no way 
to figure out if there is another socket listening on the same port, at least in, in Faro. I think, I think Janik found out some, uh, found some primitive that might help us to, to, to do it, but the usual way is there is some, uh, to, to do it is there is some library called uh, dynamic bindings, if I'm not wrong, and then you register, so you, have this, you need to, 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 uh, to decide to use this, to be aware of the problem and decide to use this library and to register your, uh, your server on this, in this library saying that, that uh, there is a, it's a table saying that you are using this port and so whenever you try to, uh, to uh, there is another one that wants to use the same port, it detects that the port is already used so you need to switch to, to something else. Yes, Igor. Does not allow to speak. Uh, yes, alive. alive. Yes. Alive. And uh, this means that uh, if if you have another application is trying to to uh, use same port for this thing for connection, it it won't be uh, available. And it it will be available only if for, for your socket you tell this option for you reuse uh, the same port number for your socket. Yes, but no, but but the, but the, 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 in this case, the socket was released I mean, from the the the, the Faro po point of view. But imagine you are you have multiple servers on your image. No way to figure out. I mean, uh, unless you do you, you you are already aware of the problem. So be aware of the problem. <laughs> so because otherwise you will have hard time figuring out what's going on. Why my, my server does not does not receive connections? Yes. Yes. Um, I f I found in the past I haven't done stuff with Faros for a long time, but naming your processes always is very very useful. So when you give the fork, try to do a fork name because it makes a lot a lot better. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's usually. At least I find it a good idea to instead of keeping a while true um, loop and then uh, a boolean is running in, in the instance to actually keep the process and make it an endless loop and then when you want to stop it you just terminate the But if you, you I mean uh, yeah, you, you, you can have it in, in, uh, in, all, in other servers, I, this is the, I mean I keep a reference on the process, this is a way to check if it is already uh, already uh, running, you check if the server is uh, resumed, if the, the process is resumed. But terminated in it by killing, by, I mean, uh, terminating the server by, by terminating the process means that you kill the process while it's in the middle of something. Yeah. And you are, you, this means that you, you can end up with some mess and you need to be sure that you, are, you do the right cleanup. It's maybe faster, but it's like a kill uh, dash nine. This is <laughs> exactly. So with 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 the, with this with this boolean, you leave you leave the process finish smoothly. So without uh, so you can you can you can have the kill. You can have the stop and the kill. You can have the, you can have the kill. Sometimes it's useful, but. Uh, yeah. I don't believe it's uh, the right pattern to to use all the time. Hmm? When you have bugs, you have to queue. Yes, of course, yes. <laughs> but usually you do it in, in the process browser or something. Okay. Ready for the, for the coffee break before Steph eats all the cookies? <laughs> Let's go for the coffee break.